everyone. My name is Mario, and uh, today I'm going to take you on a journey on why we love UJS at Ansoft. So when we were trying to find what topic to talk on webcam, our CTO actually suggested that we go with something we use often. So this is our relationship with UJS. Not really. OK. So OK, clicker's not working. Great. I think, yeah. See you again? OK, now it's working. So before I start, there are a lot of developers here, both back end, front end. We have some DevOps guys, so it might be the best that I tell you about Vue.js first. So what is Vue.js? Vue.js is actually the best web framework ever. Goodbye. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just kidding. Or am I? So now that I'm a little trolling, Let's see what Vue.js really is. So Vue.js is basically a progressive web framework built by even you. It's built back in 2014. The first version wasn't very popular because we were in the middle of the framework fiesta. They're literally pumping frameworks every day. So it didn't get the reach it expected. But in September 2016, Vue.js got very popular with version 2.0 that it got some heat and it's still like on fire, literally. It was designed from ground up to be incrementally adaptable and expandable, so you can extend to it pretty easily. It's built in JavaScript. Do you really expect anything else from a web framework? It's, it combines great things from React and AngularJS. I'm going to show you some code snippets later, so you're going to see what I'm talking about. But basically, you'll see a lot of differences, but so many similar things to React and Angular. And it has a huge ecosystem, thanks to the open source community. We love you guys. So let's continue. Now, why we love UJS at Ansoft? Before I start, I need to define the problem we had. The first problem we had, we are developing apps for retail, mostly in the betting industry, so we develop a lot for retail shops, betting shops, and we run many solutions on our, on an our architecture, which is mainly Raspberry Pis. Recently, about one month ago, we had an issue in the company, like on the field, raspberries were dying. We had to find a problem and we found it. AngularJS didn't meet our requirements anymore. It got really big and we needed to change something. Right now we're migrating from AngularJS 1.5 to Vue, but we're trying to optimize for a little bit longer until we migrate everything. React is great, but I don't know. Our developers found, found it a little bit I don't know, weird in the long term, so we kind of skipped that. I don't know why. And we like to bring junior developers into our company, so you better visit our stand in the lobby because there's an HR there. You might get a job. And we've tried to find something very comfort comfortable to junior developers to work with in the end. And our company policy has it that we like new things. It's not really a strict policy, but we kind of go with it. So let's, first solution is Vue.js is fast. And I'm not kidding, Vue.js is really fast. Right now I'm gonna show you some size differences from Angular, React, and Vue. And if you're a front-end developer, you know that using a framework has a consequence. Whenever you use a framework, you are adding a load to your website in size and automatically with speed. So Angular 2 had an abnormal size, like half a meg. We literally screamed in our company when we saw this, like, we can't go with this. Can't go with this. Then React had a massive size decrease in terms of Angular, but we thought when we extend our apps, we're still gonna have some problems. We need to go a little bit down. When we saw Vue.js, we had a relief phase, as you can see. It's huge size difference. Here are our faces. <laughs> okay, so right now this is a little comparison. I'm not gonna read all the numbers because I can't remember them, 
but you can see that even though Vue.js is fast, it has its consequences as well. It's not gonna be fast in every single case. For example, when creating, replacing, or selecting rows in the DOM, Vue.js is fast. But when partially updating them, you're gonna have a hard time because it's gonna get smacked by both Angular and React. You need to think what your, fr what your application is doing, what you need, and then choose the framework you want. So you can find these numbers on Stephen Cross website. I left, I left the link above. So second thing, UJS is beginner friendly. Now, we had a program from our partner Spark, which is like a brother to us or sister, I don't know, to our company, and they have a Spark school. It's a program that has courses for developers, designers, PR, marketing, whatever. Basically, they gave us some numbers about the pass completion, average exam pass completions for all the frameworks. Now, first, before I begin, I'm gonna show you two percentages for every framework. The second exam is not a second part of the exam. It's a repetition exam that developers take when they fail the first one. So, what the hell? <laughs> okay. Thanks, Clicker, I guess. So, first one is AngularJS 1.5. I took 1.5 because that's the, all the relevant data we had. The new Angular versions are very fresh in our Spark schools, so we can't get some relevant data. I'm just gonna stick with the laptop for now. So, first one, 27%. Crash is our colleague. He literally is so strict that everyone fails. Even I failed when I was coming to Spark School. So yeah, many developers failed. They're only 27% passed. And on the second exam, it was a little bit better, but still almost, almost half of them failed. Now, let's talk React. And this is our face, of course. Again, I like emojis, don't blame me. <laughs> Now, React had a better, better story than Angular, but still we had some issues, like developers didn't take it well. Like first exam, half of them passed. Still okay number, but we can do better, I guess. And second exam went better, so yeah. But still, we also have the flavor at the end, which is Vue.js. See, this is how our junior developers accepted Vue.js. First exam and the second one. So when I'm in the conclusion, you can see that junior developers can learn Vue.js pretty fast because it's kind of straightforward. It doesn't complicate things like Angular and React does. does. So here's a simple code comparison in React. I hope you can see it. So we have a message, message class, has an initial state with an empty string, and after that, we just update the state through the API of React, and it has HTML and JavaScript files. That confuses developers first. So basically, here's the same code in Vue.js. Remember when I said that Vue.js combines Angular and React? You can see it up there. We have a V model, which is similar to ng directives from Angular, and we have a state similar to React. And I hope you can see this one. <laughs> Basically, this is a single file component, something we love about Vue.js, because uh, you literally write all the HTML, all the JavaScript, and all the CSS in a single file. And you might notice that in this code sample, I'm using data as a function instead of an object. So first of all, using data as an object is a bad idea. I wanted to talk about this a little bit because it's not allowed in components, single file components, only direct JavaScript. It's immutable that way. Data function creates react reactive getters and setters in the background, so your state is reactive. If you put it as an object, you, you're gonna have problems, basically. So probably you can see that you all also can use SAS precompiler if you want, and you can use the for loops in HTML as well. 
Okay. Now let's talk about Vuex, because single page applications rely on state too much. It's, it will be abnormal to not cover this topic. So Vuex is a state management pattern library for Vue.js, also developed by even you, has about 200 contributors. It's used, it's used mainly for centralized store inside Vue.js applications. It is it's based on Flux, just like React's Redux, and it's pretty straightforward, so it's, not a, little, it's a little bit easier than Redux, but it's pretty much the same thing. So state management pattern libra libraries all are based on the state management pattern. It works like this. When a user clicks something on the view inside an app, it triggers an action. And when that action happens, it mutates the state, which automatically renders a new, re-renders the element. So the user doesn't see that something has reloaded, but it's just changed. That's pretty much every single page application today. So <laughs> now here's a comparison to Redux. Redux dispatches uh, actions through reducers, which update the state, while Vue.js can use mutations. You might think that's just a different name, but we come to the conclusion that at the end, Vuex uses mutations instead of reducers, but Redux makes the state mutable, so you can't change it directly, while Vuex allows you to change it directly, but still prefers mutations instead of direct mutating. Which, so also senior developers have problem with Redux, not just juniors. So basically, Vuex makes the things easy. It's pretty much straightforward. Okay. So it's a little bit more scalable to use Redux in the long term, but Vuex is pretty much easier. So if you're using Vue.js, you need to use Vuex. You can't use Redux, but that's just a comparison. Let's talk about Vue.js community and ecosystem because the ecosystem and community is what makes Vue.js real. At the time I made this presentation, Vue.js had over 100,000 stars, it had about 70,000 forks, if I'm not, no, 60,000 forks, sorry. And it had about 200 contributors to the GitHub of Vue.js. And there were about 17,000 NPM models. Now I wrote there to use them carefully. If you didn't know, NPM.js is a public repo and it's not maintainable by anyone. So everyone can publish code there. So think twice when you're installing a new module. You may install some shady code and compromise your app. And of course, I forgot this. <laughs> so it has many, many flavors of front-end models have their flavor in Vue.js, like Bootstrap, Bulma, of course. And you can straightly install the module. It's pretty popular. It has a fast evolving DOM API. Now this might be a cons because when the juniors are learning Vue.js, they're trying to find some reading material to use and constantly something gets updated, that becomes outdated. So it might be hard for new developers to keep track of it. But Vue.js documentation is pretty much updated all the time, so you can just use that. And Vue CLI 3 is awesome, and let me show you why. This is Vue CLI 3 UI. Basically, you may know that CLI is a command line interface, but there's no command line up there. Basically, they made an UI which you can track all the dependencies for your project, all the speed stats. We use it very much because it gives us an overhaul of how our app is gonna work in the production environment. Here are some apps we developed. On the left, you can see our live bedding visualization that runs mostly on TVs in the betting shops. On the right is our seven casino admin, which is the part of our seven platform. And this one's interesting. This is an app builder. We're making an app builder. We're not leaving you without a job, don't worry. <laughs> Basically, 
we need all the development force to do this, so we invite you to our stand to talk to us. Basically, I don't know, how many of you saw NSAT Vision on the lo in the lobby? Get those hands. Okay, so that NSAT Vision is supposed to be built by this. We're gonna try to build that using a net builder. Give us, I don't know, kudos. Our goal is that, so let's, uh, we'll try, but I don't know what the results are gonna be. And we love UJS this much. We became Patreon sponsors of Vue.js, uh, we support even you directly, we support all the Vue.js developers, we donate, we try to get Vue.js in out in the front and well as much as possible. So, I hope you had some, I hope you enjoyed this presentation. If you're a Vue.js developer, you probably know all of this. If you're a backend developer, probably don't care, I don't know. If you wanna learn Vue, Hope you learned something today, and at the end, I hope you had fun. Have a great webcam, guys. Thank you again, Mario. Any questions? I have one myself. So uh, with React, there's the React Web and the React Native. Does Vue have anything like React Native? Good question. I think so, okay, okay. Okay, good question. So React Native, I use it myself, it's great. There is some flavors of Vue.js like NativeScript, Vue Native, but they still haven't evolved because React Native, if you remember, was released back in 2013, I think. I'm not sure. So it has come a long, the long way, but it's still getting there, but I would use React Native for mobile development. Any questions from the audience? Anyone? No. Uh, yeah, just a quick one. Does Vue.js support server-side rendering and are you using that feature? Uh, we're using it partially, like in some modules we use server-side rendering, it does support, but that's kind of the problem with using data as an object, if you saw in this code snippet. Like, it's not gonna work with server-side rendering especially. It's gonna cause some problems with client-side as well, but server-side, no. So yeah, it does support server-side rendering, but I kind of prefer client-side, I don't know why. <laughs>